Shalom to all participants from around the world. I am Sheila Miriam, a Jewish descendant from the Anusim of Portugal. My advocacy work consists of bringing awareness of the journey of the Bnei Anusim, also called crypto Jews and known by the derogatory term of Mahanus, which means pigs. Equally, I shed light on the almost unknown history of the Portugal Inquisition and in general of the Portuguese Jewish history. On a personal note, it was deeply moving for me on my first symposium in February to receive a welcoming letter from the former Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, as well as support he gave for the return of the Bnei Anusim to join their fellow brothers and sisters in Israel centuries after being removed from the Jewish world in a most violent way. The Portuguese Inquisition was in many ways more forceful and enduring than the Spanish Inquisition, where many Jews were prevented from leaving the country by King Manuel I and forcibly converted to Christianity by the priests in Portugal. The Inquisition endured for many centuries and Jews forced with hardships and threats to their own lives kept Judaism alive out of an unimaginable love for Hashem and a determination to hold on to as many traditions as they could to keep their Jewish heritage. Today's conference, we will focus on a similarly very tragic period of the Jewish history, the Holocaust. Again, the, sp the Jewish spirit has learned and knows how to survive in the same manner as during the Inquisition. With love for Hashem and a determination to maintain their Jewish identity and to uphold it in, an, in all ways possible so as to escape persecution and death. In a dark world full of injustice and poor evil, some and Jews have made a difference by defying the evil rules and prejudice and the hatred against Jews and have become a beacon of light in the world and righteous amongst nations. In gratitude, we wish their souls be blessed for eternity. One of these righteous amongst nations is Aristides de Sousa Mendes, the Portuguese consul of Bordeaux during the Second World War, known as the Portuguese Schlinder. Aristides defies the orders of Salazar, the Portuguese dictator and writer of the Portuguese regime of the time, issuing visas and passports to an undetermined number of Jewish refugees fleeing the Nazis. The price of being a free thinker and to defy an entire society succumbed by fear and hatred is never an easy thing to do, especially coming from a country like Portugal who for many centuries relentlessly persecuted Jews and attempt to remove any existence of Judaism. Aristides, Aristides did more than saving Jews from death and persecution. With his bravery and determination to do what was normally um, not uh, common, but following his moral and ethics, he correct and with his consciousness and faith in God, he re rewound the Inquisition and the tradition of persecuting of Jews, which had endured for centuries. He transformed Portugal from a country that burned alive and oppressed millions of Jewish neshamas to a country that received and transported Jewish refugees to the United States of America, to a safe and free country where Jews could again be treated with dignity and have hope for a better life. Who was Aristides de Sousa Mendes and what led him to help Jews during the Second World War? I welcome our guest speaker, Professor Marina Pignatelli from the University of Lisbon, who is also a professor associated with CREA, an investigation center in anthropology to explain us today the remarkable life story of Aristides de Sousa Mendes, the Portuguese righteous, between facts and fiction. We will also have an exclusive screening of the film, The Council of Bordeaux, 
after Professor Marina presentation, followed by a Q&A at the end with Professor Marina. Please write your questions on YouTube chat. Professor Marina, bom dia. It's a pleasure to have you with us tonight, live from Portugal. Bom dia. Good morning. Um, I leave you now, the, uh, Professor Marina, to, to present your, your talk tonight. We are very much looking forward. Thank you. Thank you, Shilo. It's a pleasure to be here. This is very early in the morning here, of Sunday morning in Portugal. I welcome all the, 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 the people who are very nicely being attending this, um, this uh, talk. So um, I'm an anthropologist, so I'm not an historian. I would like to make this uh, uh, clear from the beginning because uh, I've um, had I had I've been working on on the Jewish um, um, presence in Portugal and also in Mozambique uh, for the last thirty years, um, but I usually deal with the present. Uh, I deal with people still living. The anthropologists anthropologist do that. Uh, so, um, of course, I have to research history and I hear a lot from the people still living about their memories and their ancestors' uh, memories also. So, I had the pleasure doing my research uh, around uh, um, 20 years ago to still um, interview refugees from the Second World War. And of course, uh, I had to read a lot about the, the history of the Portuguese Jewish uh, life in Portugal. So, uh, Aristides Sousa Mendes was, of course, um, uh, unavoidable. <laughs> so, um, I, I had to read a lot of uh, books that have already been written about Aristides. Uh, and um, I, I would ask uh, for you to put um, uh, um, a question mark in the end of the title I've, I've proposed to this uh, presentation this morning, well, this evening. Uh, I, I've suggested the title, The Portuguese Righteous Between Facts and Fiction. I would, uh, I would add just an, um, a question mark in the end, because facts and fiction lead us to ask if, in fact, uh, uh, the books tell the facts, and the the film, the movie we're going to see uh, is really a fiction. Um, and we'll have some time to talk about it and to debate that in the end uh, at the Q, uh, Q and A. So I would ask uh, Vito to 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 start with the slides, the next slide, please. And I will start with some uh, notes on on the early life of Erstich Sousa Mendes. Uh, he was born in the north of Portugal, in the central north, in a, a, a small village called Cavanas de Viriato, near Viseu. It's a, 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 the main city next to Cavanas. He was uh, one of three boys of a family, uh, a couple, uh, who uh, belonged to a, a quite um, a respected rural um, aristocracy in Portugal. You know that Portugal has um, quite a um, hierarchical structure of, of uh, a society, and this was still in the period of monarchy. So uh, the family was was um, well monarchic, uh, was belonged to the the, the aristocracy, uh, and he had a, a twin brother also who be, who also became a diplomat like him like himself. So. Um, they both um, belonged to this uh, structure of uh, uh, monarchic and uh, um, uh, uh, diplomatic uh, representation of Portugal abroad. So he graduated as well as his brother, his twin brother, in Coimbra, at the University of Coimbra, and then he married his sweetheart from childhood, Maria Angelina, um, and right right after his marriage, he started his consular uh, career. Um, the two first uh, children of, of the 14 children he had uh, were born uh, still in Portugal in Bejoz, a small village next to Carregal do Sal, where he uh, himself had, um, had uh, was born. So he went to serve uh, the first post 
he was uh, sent to was in Zanzibar. And then he went to Curitiba in 1917. And this is already during the First Republic. Portugal was uh, struggling to settle the Republican, Re Republican regime. And um, uh, they, they both, uh, 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 Aristides and his bro twin brother, started to go uh, and represent the Republic. Um, but um, he, Aristides was quite a, a problematic since the beginning of his career uh, because he didn't like much to 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 follow um, the, the 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 government's rules. Uh, he he had a, a mind of his own. We will see right, that right uh, next in the next slides. But uh, after uh, Zanzibar, he went to Brazil, and then he returned to Coimbra, where his, where his son Pedro Nuno was born. Uh, actually, other other children were born also in Brazil, but uh, I, I speak about. Pedro Nuno, because Pedro Nuno was one of the uh, Aristides um, um sons who really worked hard to rehabilitate his father's memory uh, later, later on. Um, in 1921, he was uh, sent to San Francisco, California. Then he went to Brazil again um, in, uh, uh, in 23. And then he went to Spain, Vigo. Uh, also as Consul General, and um, the next year Portugal had Salazar um, elected as uh, as the representative of uh, um, the state, and uh, Aristides was quite keen on on the, on the regime, and he said it was uh, Salazar had been uh, very welcomed in general in the, in the Portuguese society. Then he went two years later to Antwerp, and this is the post uh, um, office, uh, office, diplomatic office, where Aristides uh, stayed longer in his life. Um, he also had children uh, being born in Antwerp. Um, he was dean of the consular corps. Uh, and in the middle of his stay in Antwerp, he lost two of his uh, children. Uh, Manuel, who was 22 already, graduated uh, had already graduated in the University of Levine, and um, a baby born, uh, um, a Rachel girl. Uh, this was a coup for his uh, family, of course. Um, then he was assigned finally to, to France, uh, to Bordeaux, um, and Bordeaux was the head of the uh, administra diplomatic administration of the south of France, and this is quite important in the in, in the, the circumstances of the Second World War, as we will see. Um, next slide, please. This is a, fa a, a picture of of uh, uh, him and Angelina and uh, some of his uh, first uh, children. Next slide, please. So uh, as I was saying, he was quite um, a mind of his own. He he uh, repeatedly um, disrespected, sort of speak, uh, some um, rules regarding the diplomatic career. Uh, he was not supposed to leave his post during office, and he did it uh, quite often. Um, in 1917, right in Zanzibar, his first uh, 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 post as a representative of Portugal, he abandoned his post really uh, without permission. He was he received a, a first uh, um, warning that he shouldn't do that. Then in Brazil, again, uh, he was considered hostile to the Republic, re Republican regime, and he was suspended for two years, actually. Then in San Francisco, he also uh, got into some um, uh, um, compl complex situation because he insisted uh, among the Portuguese community, the immigrants living in California, that uh, members of that community should um, give uh, donations to a certain charity. And uh, the community was not um, agreeing with that. Some of the members complained and wrote in a, a local newspaper. Edestige also presented his own arguments 
in local uh, um, newspapers. So this was uh, quite a confusion um, for the diplomatic representation of Portugal. And the United States Department State cancelled his uh, executor. He said he, mainly he was um, exposed from from the United States. Um, then he went to Antwerp, and in Antwerp, as I was uh, telling you, he stayed there longer in as a diplomat, and um, he also received some disciplines, uh, disciplinary uh, warnings and um, uh, processes. Um, he was um, uh, trans transferring the funds of the consulate quite late. Um, the, he, he spoke openly uh, in the name of the Portuguese state um, in the opening of the exhibition in Brussels, uh, and he was not supposed to do that. And also, he abandoned his post without permission again in, in, in 1938, still in Antwerp. So next slide, please. Another picture of him already in, in France. So he goes to Bordeaux. And next, next slide, please. And uh, while he was in Bordeaux already, um, in the in in 38 before this circular 14 which is quite uh, a serious matter uh, for his career and his life um he actually had already um saved some um, passed some visas in the consulate in at bordeaux um to some unwanted um citizens uh for them to come to portugal and this was uh, the case of an Austrian Jew um, who had lost his uh, um, citizenship due to Nuremberg uh, laws and also to a Spanish um, activist who was considered by the Portuguese government uh, as an, uh, um, well, uh, an insurgent, uh, uh, a leftist and a danger to Portugal. And so uh, Aristide managed to to get them passports to a visa to come to Portugal and escape. Let's not forget also that during uh, the years of 1936 and 1939, Portugal was already uh, dealing with um, the question of the, 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 uh, the borders uh, with Spain, with the refugees, uh, with the exiles of the, the Spanish Civil War. So Portugal, since the years 33, um, right a few years after Salazar was in power, um, established something uh, known as PVDE, which is the Police of Vigilance and Defense of the State. And this police was uh, quite um, uh, rigorous and, and serious in, in controlling the borders and controlling the, the, all the matters of safety of the state regarding the Estado Novo for Salazar. And of course, the, this PVDE, this police, was already very attentive to all these immigrants coming from Spain, fleeing from the civil war, considered uh, the, the, the um, uh, agitators, and um, a threat to the to the nationalist regime of of uh, um, Salazar. So, what I would like to um, um, highlight here is that um, even before um, high orders from Salazar uh, to have caution regarding the entrance of danger, potentially dangerous people in Portugal, Erstig was already giving visas um, during the 30s. And this was a period when, in, let's not forget also, that in, in Germany, uh, the boycott had already started. So all the Jews in Central Europe were fleeing, especially from Germany, uh, before the war, uh, because their lives were being completely um, made, made impossible. Um, their shops, their their businesses, their their schools, their every the social life was being blocked. So, from the 30, uh, 1933, this movement of uh, escape of Jews from Central Europe was already beginning. So, I inter interviewed here in Portugal still Jews who had 
um, escaped before the war. Um, so uh, Circular 14, this is a document, a secret document made public uh, after the, the archive of Salazar was made available in the Torre do Tombo. This uh, Circular 14 was a document that um, um, established what you see there in the, in the slide, um, was sent to all the consul, uh, consulates uh, in Europe, stating the categories of war refugees whom the police, uh, the state police, considered to be dangerous. And I would like to highlight uh, that here the, the, the people who, was, who were supposed to not uh, to have caution regarding the visas a concession, the stateless, the Russian citizens, the holders, holders of Nansen's passport, which was a, a, a United, a United Nations uh, uh, um, passport given to stateless people also, uh, Jews expelled from their countries and those alleging to embark from Portuguese port without a consular visa. So this, uh, uh, this um, permission uh, for the consuls to 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 give visas uh, was um, um, uh, highlighted that should be uh, given these visas should be given uh, after prior authorization by the Portuguese government. So they would have the consuls would have to ask permission in advance if they wanted to give visas to these uh, specific people. Um, but also the, the the circular 14 please start next slide it's just the the, the the document in itself you can't read now back again <laughs> just to show you the the circular because this the circular is in portugal the the document um what i would like to say is that um this document also states that the 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 life of the, the concession of visas should not be difficulted should not be in general um be um, uh, um, uh, um a stone in the on the on the shoe of the immigrants so um consuls should help indeed people um coming to portugal especially those wanting to go to the united states um this was clear in the circular 14 uh salazar had in in fact uh fear of the of these people in, in in the name of several reasons, I will uh, I will state in, in, in right next to 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 this. So uh, what what um, I want to highlight is that there was not very high um, mini, there was a, a very minimum level of anti-Semitism, not only in, in in Portuguese society in general, but also in Salazar's mind. I say this because it is quite well known the relation, the close relationship Salazar had with the president of the Portuguese, the Lisbon Jewish community, Moisés Amzalak. They were colleagues in the university at Coimbra. They both study uh, economy, and they were close friends um, later on in life. And uh, Amzalak and Salazar um, had a, a quite uh, special relationship. Uh, I, I should say they had a gentleman's agreement during this period, um, and th the agreement was that Salazar would help the Jews, would help the Jewish community, and would would help the refugees, but as long as they would keep a low profile. Uh, and this is understandable in the context of Portugal in those years. Let's not forget we had a threat of the invasion of Germany, of um, the Nazi regime. So the, our regime, the Portuguese society, was in fact threatened in, in, for, in, the, in the Salazar's mind uh, in, in several ways. Not only threatened by the, the, the German invasion, which was imminent, quite imminent, in, for very, uh, um, uh, uh, very often, uh, the Azores platform, uh, islands in the Atlantic were quite, uh, um, the Germans wanted and the United States wanted also for uh, strategic reasons. And other spots in the world, like uh, our possessions in Africa. Um, so not only this question of the, the, the serious threat to lose 
the neutrality Portugal Salazar uh, arranged with uh, with uh, the international community by that time also the the regime of Salazar the Estado Novo was very keen on its conservative nationalistic uh, profile so uh, Salazar was very concerned about uh, new ideas uh, new um, transformative um, ideas and this was quite a, a, a shock uh, to assist the, the 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 refugees when they started coming by the thousands to Portugal. Uh, you can imagine how the Portuguese society received, uh, especially men, looking at uh, foreign women, Polish, Austrian, uh, blonde, blue eyes, um, uh, ladies going to the beach using a mayo, a, ba a small bathing suit. Um, going to cafes and cinemas by themselves, this was not very proper for Portuguese society, conservative society, which was um, organized around three Fs, the football, Fatima, and um, the third was Fatima football and family, family, conservative, Catholic profile. Uh, so another aspect, important aspect regarding these uh, constraints Salazar faced during these years was the, the threat of communism, the threat of com people coming from the Central Europe, Eastern Europe, and bringing ideas, revolutionary ideas. So this was much a much bigger concern for, for, for Salazar, along with the threat of losing its neutrality. So another thing was that Portugal was coming out of, 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 of a, a serious economic crisis. Uh, after the first two decades of the Republican regime until 1926, Portugal was, was uh, a disaster in terms of econ economy. And Salazar was himself an economist, a professor from, from Coimbra of uh, the University of, uh, in, in Economy. And he was very um, uh, concerned about the the impact of the coming of thousands of refugees. We didn't have, Portugal is a small country, let's not forget that um, it was the only way out for the refugees during the war. Switzerland was also neutral. Ireland was also neutral. Uh, Andorra, um, um, San Marino, small city, Vatican. But the, the fact is that Ireland was completely closed for the, the refugees because England stopped issuing visas completely. The United States also. Switzerland ha didn't have any concerns about the refugees and was in the middle of the, the Euro in the of Europe. So the, the 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 only way out of Europe was actually through Portugal because of its 800,000 uh, um, kilometers of, uh, of coast to the Atlantic. And actually two ports were uh, very, very uh, important during that period to allow these refugees to, to go to other destinies, United States, Israel, and Africa mainly. Lisbon and Leixões in Oporto, in the north of Portugal. So um, this was the, the 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 fear. These were the fears Portugal faced. Salazar faced the con the context. Um, one thing that makes me think that Salazar was not was not um, anti-Semitic uh, was also that um, he allowed um, several. Um, things uh, that councils in many councils were doing to save people without uh, a word. Uh, he would reprimand, he would send some notes uh, regarding this circular 14. Remember, you're not allowed to, to, say, to, to give visas without us knowing to whom you're giving those visas. But in fact, I remember an episode I read uh, recently on a book by a professor, um, Callum, Callum in, 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 an emeritus professor from um, Stanford University. He wrote that 
uh, I would have to check this this thing, this information. But Salazar cried when Amzalak, the president of the Port, the Lisbon Jewish community, uh, they met frequently. They were close, as as I said. Um, Salazar cried when Amzalak told him that the four thousand four hundred and so Jews of uh, Holland were to be sent to uh, death camps. Uh, and this is a fact that makes us think, why, why would he cry, right? He cried because he was sensitive to, to these people and, and especially to Portuguese among these uh, Dutch Jews, um, Sephardic descendants, of course, who lived in, in Holland. Um, but also because he 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 was he had the notion that they, this was a terrible thing. So we had other people also along with Aristide Sozaminch uh, saving Jews. Um, but let's go on with uh, with Aristide, please. Next slide. The next uh, uh, three because this is the circular fourteen. So. Another thing we can uh, we think about is how the Portuguese regime also um, allowed the main uh, aid agencies, Jewish agencies, to be settled in, in Portugal, um, mainly um, the Joint uh, Committee um, and HIAS also, the um, uh, agency for immigration uh, in Israel would have its offices in in um, it moved for, to Lisbon in in 1939 40 I'm sorry 40 and um, next slide please we're going to see how uh, Stitch started to 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 spread his visits to in Bordeaux. So what uh, actually happened was that um, from uh, especially uh, 1940, uh, with the Nazi army approaching Paris, it is estimated that um, by 8 to 10 million uh, Jews and, and others fled in panic to the south of France. And by then, the Portuguese consulate had already issued 1,200, around this number, authorized visas, except uh, the Austrian, the Spanish doctor and professor I, uh, I was telling you about. And very few more, Aristide Sosamente later denied, but that are today identified. Um, so up to 10th of June, 19, 1940, um, there were... Uh, the 59 regular visas issued when Italy entered the war this day. On 11th June, 66, uh, 67 visas. On 12th June, as we see there, the, the date Spain changes to a non-belligerent position instead of neutral, as Portugal was already, um, and invades Tangier, Spain invaded Tangier. Uh, Aristide Sosamente uh, issued 47 visas. On 13th of June, only six visas. This is a date, a, an important date for, for his life because he had a, a nervous breakdown. He, he started to um, reflect uh, and, and to be um, pressed by the whole situation that was um, being lived in his consulate. You see the picture there of the, the, the queue of the people asking for visas at his door. So he went into be, uh, into his room for three days um, with a, a nervous breakdown. Was it because of all these refugees at his door or because uh, he had also a mistress in France uh, he had met in this uh, in 1940, exactly this year. She had shown, shown up pregnant um, at the consulate and provoked a scandal in front of Sosa Mendes' family also. She got in herself imprisoned for the uh, incident or because of both things or because of the whole situation was a mess. So uh, he went into his room for three days to, to, to think, to, um, to rest a little bit. But even so, visas went on being issued at his consulate 
on the 14th of June, 173 visas. On the 15th of June, 112. On a Sunday, uh, 16th of June, when the diplomat Francisco Calleiras Menezes comes to to visit him and help him and ask him what's what what is the matter with you when you're in a room and all these people are out out here wanting visas and you're closed here in your room. What is happening? Um, even so, it was a Sunday and the consulate was supposed to be closed. Forty visas were issued. Uh, let's we're talking about visas, but we're also talking about human lives, right? These visas mean salvation. Um, including on this day, on this Sunday, the Rothschild family, very famous. On the 17th of June, uh, his son says that it's the day of the con of conscience. It's day comes out of his room and he decides to grant visas to all those who request them. He says he's in inspired by a divine power and with the help uh, of his children, his family. Um, he says, from now on, I'm giving everyone visas. There will be no more nationalities, no more races, no more religions. His son, Pedro Nuno, um, tells us later. And on that day, he issued 247 visas. The next day, 221, and then the next day, 156. Among those who are helping him are uh, is his wife, his sons, Pedro Nuno and José Antonio, his secretary, José Siabra, and a rabbi, uh, an Orthodox uh, Polish rabbi, uh, Kruger, um, and his wife and, his, uh, and the five children. He had met on the streets days before. He had uh, brought this rabbi and his family to his own home in, in Bordeaux, and um, it, there's a story of, told by his the, the Rabbi Kruger's son um, in a, in a documentary in a documentary film um, issued by our Portuguese television. It's online. You can see it. it the documentary is called. Um, um, it, it's by Diana Andringa, a journalist on uh, 1993. Um, and Ra uh, Rabbi Kruger um, was ho uh, hosting in Aristide Chosemen's house, and uh, uh, Aristide tells him, "I will pass you visas and your own fam all, all family." And ra the Rabbi says, "No, I, I, I will have to refuse. Uh, I, um, if you, I will only ex accept your offer if you pass the the, the visas to." All these people that are asking for visas at your door, all my brothers, please help my, all my brothers. So, uh, so, so Aristide did. Um, so um, Kruger responded, a moral crisis um, of incalculable proportions. Uh, about uh, he was talking about uh, Sosa Mendes situation when he was closing his room. Testimonies also speak about a production line of visas that was established at the consulate at Bordeaux. One person would collect the passports from the refugees. A second person would stamp them. The Sosa Mendes would sign it. And then the secretary, Siabra, would assign the visa a number. And someone would record the date, the number, the visa number, and the name of the person in a uh, larger book. Another uh, slide, please. So on the 17th June, this is uh, the day of conscience. Uh, this is what uh, uh, Susan Mensch says. If I must disobey, I prefer to disobey an order, an order of man instead of an order from God. So he thought it was God's uh, wish to save lives, uh, uh, God's commandment. Uh, so man's commandment, Salazar's commandment was no good. Um, and an and, uh, Holocaust refugee, uh, Mr. Kostler, in uh, 1941's memoir, he says, by watching that interminable procession, one realized that the catalog of possible reasons for persecution under the new order was much longer than even a specialist could imagine. In fact, 
it covered the entire alphabet from A, from Austrian monarchist to Z uh, for Zionist Jews. So, um, on 20th June, the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Portugal is informed by the British Embassy that Sousa Menge was extending his uh, opening hours of the consulate to grant visas. He was receiving more money for those extra visas. Um, so, uh, Sousa Menge have, had even demanded uh, contributions to charity in exchange for visas, as he had done in San Francisco already. So on that day, Erstig is dispatched to Bayonne by the Portuguese embassy in Paris. Um, the 20th to 23rd of June, he goes on with his activity in the Portuguese consulate in Bayonne, which was under his jurisdiction. Uh, he went to relieve the vice consul, Faria Machado, who was refusing to grant visas to, to the crush of refugees. Um, he said, go away, no more visas. So um, he took over the, the astonished vice consul at Bayonne um, and was aided by the Bayonne consular secretary, Manuel Vega Braga, Vieira Braga. Sorry. On, the next, uh, uh, on June 22, France has truces with Germany and Sosa Mendes shouts at the refugees to go back to their homes. Even so, he continues to issue visas in an improvised papers, which will not be accepted at the Spanish border. Um, Faria Machado, a Salazar loyalist, loyalist um, in charge of the Bayonne Consulate, reported um, Sousa Mendes' behavior to, to the ambassador to Spain, Pedro Teutonio Pereira. And Teutonio Pereira went to meet Aristide Sousa Mendes in San Sebastian to... Um, call his attention um, to, uh, to what he was doing to, to con try to control the situation. The guards at the frontier, the Spanish frontier, were al also shouting that this, the crowds were immense and they were not coping with the situation, uh, were able to, to, um, to cope with the situation. So Teutonio Pereira, who himself was, uh, oh, had also issued thousands of visas uh, to refugees, especially soldiers going to, to uh, fight for, for the allied, allied forces in the North, in the, in the African um, armies. Uh, Titonio Pereira was uh, uh, very angry with uh, Sosa Mendes and said in wrote in documents that he was not well in his mind. He was um, kind of um, uh, disturbed in, in, his, in, in his state of mind. Um, the other, the other um, slide, please. Vitor. Okay, this is um, the route, the route that you can see uh, the early, the the one before, but please. Yes, here in the map you see the the route that Arstij, uh and all the refugees in general mainly took from France to cross Port uh, Spain to Portugal and from Portugal uh, from entering the northeast of Portugal you see the 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 lines going to the Atlantic to Lisbon and to Porto uh, i would like um, next slide please this is a um a, um, a testimony of his son uh João Paulo uh, regarding the situation at the border um, and when his father was also expelled from the, the consulate and even so he was uh, uh, passing visas on the roads uh, and at the and at the border itself to people to 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 cross to Portugal and to flee next slide please uh, I will uh, just name a few uh, of other um, Portuguese who also helped um, along with Sosa Mendes, of course, extraordinary role in this um, uh, issuing visas and helping um, uh, in operational terms to uh, help these all these um, refugees to, to escape to, to the ships uh, to, to other countries out of Europe. 
Uh, Vega Simões, he was the envoy of Portugal in Berlin from, uh, uh, and he was also dismissed in 1940. Teutonio Pereira himself, I was talking about him, the ambassador of Portugal in Madrid, um, who also issued uh, 16,000, well, the number uh, are not quite um, uh, important, but the, the, he did so. Um, the Portuguese uh, honorary consul in Milan, um, Angenore Magno, and also very uh, several other honorary consuls who usually were foreigners, but uh, they were representing Portugal and issued uh, visas here and there. Um, a noble Portuguese lady, Dona Maria Adelaide Bragaça, she was a, a member of the resistance in, in Austria. She was twice sentenced to death by Hitler, and Salazar has saved her. She, uh, he wrote to Hitler saying, it is completely in inadmissible that uh, you have a prisoner of uh, Portuguese um, royal family, so please release her, and, he, and, and Hitler did so. She saved uh, people also. Uh, there's a, a recent book on her uh, also. She was a nurse and uh, she hid and saved um, people from the resistance um, during the, the war and also Jews. Carlos Sampaio Garrido, who was the Portuguese ambassador in, in Hungary, uh, his, his successor, because Sampaio Garrido, like Sosa Mensch, was also sent away from the embassy, from his career, diplomatic career, and uh, Lis Teixeira, um, Branquinho, who took Sampaio Garrido's uh, um, office in, in Budapest, um, also issued visas, many visas. The, the embassy at uh, Budapest was even uh, put f uh, in fire. Um, their houses were, uh, were full of refugees, their private houses, I mean. Another important name here, Francisco Leite Pinto. He was later the minister of Salazar, uh, minister of education. But before that, he was, during the war, uh, responsible for the rail, the railways, um, the railways of the northeast of Portugal. And Salazar had told him to set a line of railways, of trains, to go to the frontier, the northeastern frontier of Spain, to to send uh, Wolfram. I don't know if you'd say that like that in English. Uh, mineral, a very important um, uh, mineral uh, that Portugal was exporting to Germany and to the Allies to England. It was an important uh, mineral for for um, armament, um, and so Portugal was. Uh, uh, giving that product, selling that product to, to the, the belligerent countries. But the trains were delivering that mineral, that um, uh, metal, I don't think it's a metal. Um, and in return, the trains would bring refugees inside. It was, there were sealed trains that were coming, going up the, the, to the frontier full of uh, Wolfram and coming down to Lisbon full of refugees. Um, also, uh, Moisés Jamzalak, of course, um, the, the president, uh, and the staff of the Lisbon community uh, working along with refugees that were already settled in Lisbon and in Oporto. They were uh, working together uh, concertedly and they settled uh, the Comasis, the um, Comissão de Assistência, a Commission of Assistance to Refugees during these years of war. And also a, 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 a priest, Catholic priest, who was living in, in Rome. He was the dean of the Pontifical College at, in, in the Vatican, the Portuguese Pontifical College. And his history is also very, very interesting. Well, let's go back to Sosa Mendes, please, to finish our... <laughs> Presentation, Vitor, please next. Uh, next, the next. Uh, we'll go. We'll skip this one. So the shipping companies uh, here. Are the picture of Moses Amzalak and uh, the picture of uh, 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 a visa um, of Aristides 
in Bordeaux. Another, and, uh, and the ship's going away with the, with the refugees. Next slide, please, Victor. So, uh, so um, actually, uh, Sosa Mensch was um, made to stop his, <laughs> his work. Um, he was um, doing all this um, contrary to that circular 14. So a process, a disciplinary process starts. Please, next slide. And the charges for this um, the proceedings um, are, are these seven charges. Um, violation of the, the, the circular 14, uh, the orders Sosa Mensch had given to, to his consul in Bayonne to issue visas to all those who requested them, orders to Bayonne to distribute visas freely of charge, permission by telephone to the consul of Toulouse that also he should issue visas, um, acting in a dishonorable way for Portugal vis-à-vis -vis the Spanish and German authorities. Um, here, very very important because of that I was telling you uh, regarding the threat of invasion of German invasion in Portugal uh, so threat of losing our net neutrality and abandoning his post at Bordeaux without a <laughs> authorization and ex ex extortion um, there were heavier charges but um, uh, the regime didn't care about them I think Salazar made some blind eye regarding uh, heavier things that could have been charged to, to Sosa Minch, like forging a passport. He did that also, even before the, the war, um, already in Bordeaux, um, to a, 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 a Luxembourg um, gentleman who was married to a Portuguese Sosa Minch met. And, well, the, 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 the um, Salazar didn't care about that. He made a blind eye to that. And these were the charges. Ne next slide, please. Um, so the main response is to the to the charges. It says, "I was in. It was indeed my aim to save all these people." Um, he was concerned about the fate of so many thousands of people. If they fell into the hands of the enemy, they would be shot as rebels. Many were Jews. Uh, who already persecuted and sought to escape the horrors of further persecution. In, he knew he was obeying the dictates of humanity that, and that distinguished between neither race nor nationality. So he uh, used this line of argumentation for some years and later on he would change his line of argumentation. He would say that, um, in fact, what moved him to, to pass these visas was that the Circular 14 was unconstitutional because the Portuguese constitution says it is forbidden to discriminate in the grounds of race and re or religion. Next slide, please. So the verdict was, anyway, the, he disobeyed higher orders during service and Salazar was even harder. He said he sentenced Sosa Mendes to a penalty of one year of inactivity to earn only half of his uh, salary. And after that, he would should be retired. So he would be suspended from the diplomatic corps, which didn't, which didn't happen, actually. He was not suspended. He remained in the diplomatic corps. The books uh the book uh the register the annual uh, the uh, book of the diplomatic corps still bared his name up to his uh death uh, Justitius Mendes died in 1954 so um he had this daughter uh 14th daughter Marie Rose she's the only one still living today um she was born in 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 1940, she, he was admitted already in Lisbon um, to the uh, to be a, a lawyer. A lawyer, he was admitted uh, admitted at the bar association, but actually he didn't um, want to to be a lawyer. He went to live in his mansion in uh, uh, Cabanas do Viriato, as you see in the picture. Um, 
but he was in a mess. I mean, he was devoid of his uh, profession. He had all those children. And there's this um, story of, of Isaac Piton, who says that um, one day, uh, I, I think I don't have time to show you the 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 the, the, the real video of his testimony of Isaac Bitton's testimony. Um, the 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 thing is, uh, Bitton remembers Sosa Minch coming out coming uh, to the Cuisine Economica, which was the the the, uh, the kitchen soup the soup kitchen in Lisbon that would uh, give a hot meal to the refugees. And he sees a man with his wife and a lot of children coming uh, for a meal. And Isaac Bitton was helping there. His aunt was uh, responsible for that kitchen, was working with the refugees. And the, the, the Bitton was a teenager then and says, Sir, um, this is only for refugees. You cannot be here. And um, it was Aristide Sousa Menz. And he said, I'm also a refugee. Um, my boy, I'm also a refugee in my own home, in my homeland. So, next slide, please. After the war, uh, he went to live uh, uh, in Cabanas Viriato. He actually didn't want to be a lawyer. He suffered a stroke and was quite affected physically by the stroke. Um, he changed his justification from humanitarian mo motives to unconstitu unconstitutional, as I said. And then uh, um, suddenly uh, some people start to be aware of Sosa Mendes' role during, the, uh, during the, 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 the war at Bordeaux. There's a, a, um, an article written in the United States uh, by a Portuguese journalist to try to um, bring awareness regarding his uh, his role uh, helping the refugees. His wife dies in 1948, and he marries the French lady he had met in 1940 in, in Bordeaux, uh, André Sibial. Um, later on, he travels to France and meets for the first time his daughter, Marie Rose, age 10. Um, one year punishment with half pay actually uh, it was still quite uh, a good salary anyway but uh, he had 14 children and he uh, his wife had an expensive life so he had to sell the house in cabanas viriato um and he died in 1940 is 54 as you see there next slide please and the last i think uh, well, these are all the, the um, uh, I won't have time to go into this, um, all the honorary uh, references that have been made. I would highlight only that the United States had said as a found, created a foundation with his name. Um, the Canada has also made him, um, paid him homage with a, a, garden, a garden with his name. Bordeaux also has a, a, com a commission uh, um, uh, an international committee to commemorate Edstid Sosa Mensch, uh, also in, in California. Um, well, you have uh, also a, a Fundação Edstid Sosa Mensch here in Portugal. Actually, Yad Vashem has uh, in 66, 66 recognized Sosa Mensch as the righteous, a righteous among the nations. And the Portuguese government, um, 20 years later, recognizes. Sosa Mensch as an, uh, uh, um, a person to be valued, uh, a humanitarian and a righteous also. Um, so a parliament uh, um, session is devoted to him and forgiveness is asked to his family. He's, uh, char uh, he's, uh, he's promoted to ambassador in 86 in, in Portugal. The, the next slide, please, and that will be the last, I think. So in, in, um, in 20, um, 2020, um, he, he, the, um, sorry, I have the reference here, 9 of June of 2020, Portugal granted official recognition uh, to Sousa Mendes, 
parliament decided a monument in the national pantheon should bear his name. And a um, few weeks ago, <laughs> in 19 October, um, he actually uh, received the honors of the national pantheon. This is a, a special date because 19th of October, 1940, uh, 81 years ago, that was when the council gathered to accuse Sosa Mendes of his uh, um, irregularities in, in his career. Uh, and it, it was also the day, and it is also the day his daughter Marie Rose turns, uh, he, she turned 81 years old. So um, I would state only uh, two ideas to finish. Manuela Franco actually um, says that with the victory after the war, um, after, with the victory of the Allies, of course, is, uh, over the Axis, Salazar took credit for Portugal having received the refugees, and rightfully. Um, Portuguese history books were started to be written accordingly. Uh, but Manuela Franco um, highlights that she, she is the director of the Portuguese Foreign Ministry archives. She said, the image of Portugal as safe heaven was born then in Bordeaux and it lasts to this day. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Marina, for this insightful presentation on the life of Aristides de Souza Mendes. It was absolutely fascinating and engaging uh, to learn some many unknown facts about the life story of this great and righteous Portuguese um, man. <laughs> uh, make us, uh, for sure, all Portuguese very proud uh, of his um, good deeds. Um, I would just would like to introduce um, a little bit more of the work of our um, special guest speaker tonight for our participants. Uh, Professor Maria Pignatelli is a cultural anthropologist and associate professor at the Social and Political Science Institute, the University of Lisbon. Uh, her research focuses on Portuguese Jews and Judaism since 1990. Currently, she's studying Mahanos in Portugal and also the pro Portuguese intangible cultural heritage. Uh, some of these the, the professor already uh, mentioned briefly on, on her introduction and presentations. Um, just for those who may be interested, the, there's some books the professor has been the author. Uh, I will name now, Crypto Jewish Prayers Notebook and Ethno Ethnographic notes on the Jews and New Christians of Bragança. Uh, another book is Jews and New Christians in the Lusophone World and the Jewish Community of Lisbon Past and Presence in the Construction of the Portuguese uh, Anthropological Association and Researcher at CREA, uh, Research in Anthropology Center. Uh, I'll put these books on the comment uh, chat for those who may be interested uh, in purchasing the future and get to know more about the Portuguese Jewish history in, in Portugal. Uh, we will now have the link um, placed on the comment chat on the YouTube uh, the, for the film, uh, the Council of Bordeaux. Uh, we also have the link placed on the description of the YouTube channel that is streaming live. And when it finished the finish, uh, around one hour and 30 minutes, we will be back here for the Q&A. Uh, so please feel free to um, post your questions on the comment chat on the YouTube for Professor Maria Pignatelli. I hope you are enjoying. I am definitely enjoying and learning so much, and I hope to see you soon.
Good evening. Uh, I hope you have gained valuable information to allow you to better understand this interesting period of Jewish history in Portugal. Uh, I hope you had enjoyed the uh, amazing lecture from Professor Marina Pignatelli uh, earlier this evening. Uh, we apologize um, vehemently. Uh, we had some technical issues with the film um, upload. Uh, it didn't uh, allow to have the subtitles. Um, uh, I purchased the video with the subtitles. We send you a second link for you to watch um, uh, with auto-generated subtitles, and we will try during the week to send you uh, another link with better subtitles. Uh, but I hope you manage to watch as much as you could. Uh, and if you have any questions, please uh, place on the comments chat. We will have now a small 10-15 uh, minutes Q&A with Professor Marina Pignatelli. So we would like to, he to hear from you. Um, Professor uh, Marina, I hope you had enjoyed the experience. Yes, very much. Thank you. <laughs> it was a pleasure. I hope you enjoyed the film. Was the first time you watched the film, or you had watched? No, I have, I, I've I've watched the the launching of the film here in Portugal a few years ago, uh, and we had a, a a very nice meeting with the with the actor Vitor Norte and the the producers. Um, I've seen it a couple of times already. Yes. <laughs> it is a it very is important. A good, it is a good movie, and it we'll is a very good movie. The subject of your um, presentation today, which is, uh, uh, you know, what is fiction and what is actually factual on the movie, um, but it's definitely a very nice film. Uh, there is a question several people posted, um, and basically. Um, uh, it says, uh, did Aristides de Sousa Mendes had any Jewish ancestry? The Mendes name was often indicative of a Jew, Converso. Well, it is true. I'm also M Marina Mendes de Almeida. So my, my, my mother's name is also Mendes. It's a common name in Portugal, actually. Mendes, uh, the, end, the, the, um, the end of the word um, means the son of Mendo. So it is, um, it is related to very well-known uh, Jewish lineage um, in, the, um, in the medieval times. And uh, we would have to do some genealogical work uh, regarding Sosa Mendes family. Um, I don't know that line of research, actually. He was a very uh, good Catholic, actually, in his home in Pasal, in, in Cabanas Viriato. In, at the entrance, there's a huge um, cross, Christian cross. Um, so he was a confessed and Practice, uh, practiced uh, uh, Catholicism. So it's uh, no matter if he was Jew or not, he thought it was a humanitarian commandment to 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 do his work like he did. I, I'm actually fr good friends with one of his granddaughters. Um, um, unfortunately, she couldn't be here tonight. Uh, it's something for another uh, special occasion, maybe to do an interview with her, to speak um, in first hand of uh, her experience and um, how the family cope with um, with the hardship um, uh, after the the, um, the disobedience uh, <laughs> of Salazar and his uh, harsh decrees on. Um, on the family was very very difficult. We know that recently um, the the descendants of the survivors um, had rebuilt some of the the state, the main home. Uh, would you like to um, tell us a little bit more how the Portuguese um, feel and embrace, and also the descendants the the the, the brave acts of Aristides de Sousa Mendes, uh, can we uh, assume that today he received the honor that he deserved? Yes, I think so. His house was um, 
set to be restored to be a, become a museum. It, be, it went to the hands of the Fundação Aristide Sousa Mendes in 2000, and the Portuguese government gave um, some millions of euros to uh, recover it. Uh, it has received some um, exhibitions and uh, routes of meetings of the family around the house. And um, more importantly, not only recover the house definitely to make it a museum, uh, also tell the story at schools. It is important to keep on spreading the, the, the message of uh, humanitarian aid in times of crisis and going beyond uh, rules and regulations and um, uh, to, to save lives uh, as the Jewish commandment states regarding the Pikwash Nefesh, which is save one life, is to save the whole humanity. humanity. So I think the family is proud of Rishtidish um, uh, and, and is uh, rightfully uh, proud. And um, the message should go on besides the house being restored to be a place to gather and reflect and debate and show the, the role of Aristides in, in, regarding the, 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 the shelter and the, save, the saving of all these refugees. Yes, it is a, a wonderful feeling to be Portuguese as we both are and, and to have in our history such a, a great man. Uh, it is, uh, uh, it's an honor for all of us indeed. Uh, I'm not sure how much um, in comparison with the with the famous Schlinder who saved more lives, but the point is not on numbers, but on the act itself. Um, do you think that the majority of the Jewish uh, nation actually knows about Aristides de Sousa Mendes today? I think so. And you, you touched a, a serious point there with the number of, of people comparing the numbers. And actually, Aristides was not alone, as I showed. There were many other Portuguese who were responsible and were um, preoccupied to, to save um, refugees, no matter if they were Jews or not Jews, or communists or not communists, refugees from Spain, from the Civil War, from Franco or others. There were many people. And actually, the numbers are not very important, but um, uh, and there's a debate around the, de the number of visas and there's the, the Sosa Mendes list, which states that there are 10,000 visas he passed to Jews and uh, 20 more thousand to others, other refugees. This is a number which is debated and uh, crossing the, the, the cross-referencing the, the numbers at the consulate and regarding the, the testimonies of the, 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 the offspring of the survivors. Um, it is uh, quite a, a serious matter. In fact, um, we should um, gather all this information and keep on researching regarding all the people that were involved in this, in, in this process of saving lives during the Second World, World War. <laughs> Thank you, Professor. Uh, I would say another point to make some reference um, for the participants um, in relation to Salazar position. I believe there was a British uh, diplomat that described him as one of the most romantic dictators ever. <laughs> and he was extremely well successful with women who would fall madly in love with, with Salazar, which is something that I was quite surprised in his bibliography. Um, and I, I would like to know, how can we understand such dictotomy from a person who actually was good friends with a Jew and in the end uh, so harshly banish and punishes a man for doing what is an uh, uh, act of humanity, uh, whatever the religion is, and, and being him himself, Salazar, so Catholic, um, why could he just be less harsh? It, it, there's any um, studies or interpretations towards this uh, this reaction of him? Well, I think I I, I, um, I, I said it earlier that um, Salazar had 
other reasons to con try to control the borders from Spain and uh, to control the entry of the of these refugees, no matter their religion. In 39, 1939, he started uh, to react by right when this, the war started, Salazar sent a telegram to the Portuguese embassy in Berlin ordering that it, it should be made clear to the German Reich that the Portuguese law did not allow any distinction based on race or religion. So Portuguese Jewish citizens could not be discriminated against. Um, the rights uh, of the Portuguese Jews were to be defended with the whole diplomacy, but very firmly. So he was really <clears throat> sensitive to the humanitarian uh, um, issue. Um, and he was concerned also with the politi poli political and economical reper repercussions of the entry of these refugees, uh, because he was afraid that we would be invaded by Germany, and he was afraid that our economy would not stand thousands of people foreigners coming to the country. We, we didn't have the means to, to give shelter to all those people, to feed them, to, to house them. And also, we, he was tremendously afraid of subversive political ideas and new modern Central and Eastern uh, European ideas. So he was not anti-Semitic, as I tried to show. He was, he was close to uh, Jewish friends in port in lisbon and he was sensitive to the to the portuguese who were abroad he wanted to save them independently if they were jews or not jews uh, he wanted to save people actually but he had these constraints uh, concerning germany we had su german ju submarines here in the the tagus river <clears throat> we had telegrams and spies stating that the germans were really ready to invade portugal spain and portugal so he was trying, he was in, in a, a com complex um, uh, game uh, to play, right? <laughs> yes. Um, I heard um, some time ago um, that uh, not only he had the pressure from, the, from Germany, but also from England, who uh, particularly we are the longest alliance on earth with the British, and we always do what they ask us to do. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the British particularly wanted Portugal to be neutral, so to avoid Spain to also be involved. And also there was a lot of pressure from the, the Catholic Church at the time uh, not to receive the Jews because they were afraid that um, eventually uh, it would become more Jews in Portugal again than and a more vibrant community. So they were, in a way, um, um, sensitive to the need of give some aid, but they were putting a lot of pressure on, on Salazar to not bring so many. Uh, is any true to these uh, claims? Yes, I might think so. There's the Catholic pressure, but he also, also had the Jewish community pressure and the international pressure to save them, to save these refugees. Um, international humanitarian and constitutional pressure uh, regarding the United Nations, the, the League of Nations at, at that time. And, and also, we should think of comparing Salazar to Churchill or to Roosevelt what were they do what and the and the vatican what were they doing regarding these 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 refugees nothing so salazar quite did something um against all the other uh, political leaders around the world during, during the war right yes <laughs> um i i personally i do sailing and in portugal many of um my fellow uh, sailors uh, telling me that Qashqais in particular um, had more kings without throne during the Second World War than anywhere else in the world. And is where Casino Royale was invented, the film, because he had all these British... Um, Spies. French, 
German spies and all these kings without throne uh, in uh, exile. And some of my friends even remember to still do sailing with the, uh, with the, the king, king of Spain, Carlos of Spain yeah. <laughs> and all the, 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 the stories uh, involved with that. Uh, which is quite fascinating that we we grow up in Lisbon with all of this history and uh, uh, not always at classes in history we 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 um, are told all these little details so uh, it, it is fascinating at the age stage to actually learn more about what what happened during that time. Uh, well, actually, it was in Estoril. Uh, close to Cascais, where the whole, um, it was kind of a, a cosmopolitan, nobiliarchic <laughs> setting during the war and, and of espionage. Lisbon had even uh, um, a hotel next to the Roussou main train station in the city center, which had a, a secret passage where the refugees and the spies could come out of the train they would go into this hotel through this secret passage of, of hotel of Venida, uh, where the spies or the, the negotiators or diplomats or refugees would um, try to hide or, or deal with their their businesses and then go back into the train without putting a foot in lisbon uh, apart from this hotel room <laughs> So actually, Lisbon was uh, a platform of transit of all kinds of people, all kinds of people, uh, refugees, politicians, royalty. Uh, it was really, um, and it's quite well documented. Yes. And it still needs to be more and more documented. <laughs> yes. Um, I was just going to read a, another question by another participant. Um, I don't think he's quite really understanding the position of Salazar. So he says, not sure if I understand why, if Salazar was such a good man, why did he take such a tough position against uh, Sosa Mendes? Well, yes, uh, as I tried to explain earlier, um, he reprimanded ser uh, several times Sosa Mendes since the beginning of his career, he was, so the Mendes was crossing lines, um, even from Zanzibar and then in, in the United States, in Brazil, uh, in Curitiba, in, in, uh, and then in Bordeaux, of course. So he had had his code of warnings. <laughs> so the Mendes, other, other consuls, uh, general consuls, Portuguese consuls had been uh, expelled also. Ambassador, Portuguese ambassador in Budapest, um, Sampai Garrido, was also dethroned from his post as ambassador uh, from Hungary. And he also died uh, in misery, like, uh, like um, not in misery, but with his salary, uh, but uh, without his, his post, he was excluded from, uh, from the career. Actually, as I was trying to explain, Salazar had to, to play this double double uh, way of, of dealing with the situation. He, he had to not confront Germany in order not to be invaded, Portugal not to be invaded. If Portugal was invaded, that would be the end of any saving of, of, of refugees, right? So this would be... Uh, 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 a constraint uh, apart from what I said, the economical pressure that Portugal would would uh, was uh, uh, handling, uh, dealing with uh, regarding the refugees, the problems with Spain that was also pressuring Salazar not to uh, let these refugees come in, um, and England also uh, was uh, was not keen on, on was trying to let the soldiers go to Portugal and go to come to to fight in the in the Allied forces in Africa and other uh, places, but actually Salazar was ambiguous in this sense, right? For one to on site, he wanted to he let all the agencies, the Jewish um, immigration agencies, uh, operate in Lisbon. He uh, let these refugees settle first with a visa of thirty days, and then he opened the the, the period to eight months. So these refugees had time to prepare to get their tickets to go on with their trips for other destinations. 
um, he managed to try to control the situation there were thousands of people coming all kinds of people and he had to deal with this international pressure of germany and england <laughs> both sides yes and at the same time keep his authoritarian regime and i think that's because he took it personal it was more than a, a jewish issue with that it was more of a personal disobedience that he wanted to make a, a point to anyone else in Portugal who would try to defy him. And I think that's why perhaps his reaction was so harsh towards Aristides. It was not because of him saving Jews necessarily, but because he tried to disobey him and he wanted to send yes, a message. These were the official him. orders. These were the, the rules then. The consuls had to follow these rules to control at least who was coming in. Uh, regarding the the Estado Novo, the the ideals, uh, the, the nationalistic perspective, but that's one one reason only in, among others: uh, the economical pressure, the international pressure, the the social pressure, the conservative Portugal, as I tried to explain. Also, the mentality was that uh, all the coming of these foreigners suddenly was kind of a threat also to the Portuguese uh, customs and, and culture. and But that was a detail among others, right? Yes. <laughs> uh, we also know that refugees uh, would go and, and travel to the United States in Portuguese boats. And next week we will be focusing on the Lubavitch Rebbe um, uh, escape from France via Portugal, uh, the Rebbe stayed in Lisbon. He gave some shirims there, and there are some diary notes. We will um, show the boat, the, the Lubavitch Rebbe travel, the Portuguese boat to the United States, and um, testimonial video of his arri arrival in, in New York from Portugal. Um, uh, so I hope you you will be here next week for for that wonderful. That thing conference. of the ships is very important, and we had Portugal and also Salazar had these national company shipping companies operating, and another uh, the, the colonial national um, shipping company, the the national uh, regular com shipping company, and also uh, uh, the Azoran shipping company, which belonged to a Jew, the, the Jews, the Jewish family Ben Saud, which was operating and saving lives. Apart from that, many many other ships were harboring Lisbon from Japan, from Czechoslovakia ships from many not Czechoslovakia but um, from uh, Spain were coming. To, to pick refugees up at Lisbon port or uh, Les Choins in the north and take these refugees out, whether to Africa, to Macau, to, to Brazil, to Americas, to the Americas. And I would like also to, to mention, I'm, I'm sure the professor um, already did, but Salazar, contrary to um, other dictators of the time, Mussolini and uh, Franco, he was very much... Um, helpful towards the Jews in Portugal, where uh, both Spain and Italy, if I'm not mistaken, they also deported Jews to Germany, but not Portugal. Portugal never deported Jews to never. Germany. Never. On the contrary, <laughs> Salazar tried to take them out, out of those, uh, they called them the, the, the um, camp, special camps for uh, um, prisoners of neutral countries. Uh, um, so uh, that was really an issue. He wanted to save all the Portuguese descendants uh, spread throughout Europe to, to save them and bring them to Portugal. Professor, you think because we have a history of a strong inquisition that endured almost 400 years, uh, that because of that reason um, and trying to make peace with our so dark and negative history that perhaps during the Second World War, um, from Salazar to Aristides and the nation itself, because um, many people around the nation was, you know, helping um, during this time, providing clothes and all sort of things they could to the refugees, that we were trying to redeem us as a nation from what happened before. 
I don't think that was in the back of the mind of Salazar and, or the regime. I think by then, Portugal and Salazar himself grew up in a Catholic seminary. He studied in the Catholic seminary. And by that time, Portugal in general was already aware that the, there were no Jews in Portugal. Uh, the Jews that uh, were living in Portugal were living, um, had come back to Portugal from the north of Africa, from Morocco, and had, had entered in the country through Faro in the south of in the Algarve, through the Azores, and through Lisbon. And there were very small communities uh, uh, of newcomers, of returnees, of Jews, who had been expelled from the Inquisition and went to Morocco. And then when the Inquisition ended, ended in 1829 with the Constitution, uh, the Jews, they started to, to come to the country back then, well, even a little bit earlier. So. Salazar had a good relation, and as I told you, with the Jewish community in Lisbon. Uh, he was close friends with Amzalak. They were, had been colleagues at the university. And um, in the, the rest of the society, there were movements of antisemitism. There was Integralismo Lusitano. There were some voices of antisemitism. Um, well, eugenic, um, eugenic laws uh, were, were spreading regarding racism. And there were some some people thinking like that, but very few. In general, uh, the, the the society didn't have a, a Jewish question. In, there was no Jewish question in Portugal. Um, they thought the, the 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 issue of the Inquisition had been handled. Um, Three hundred years of of bonfires, um, killing Jews here had resolved the the the, the problem. Uh, the others didn't make a fuss, the, the, the small communities existing, they were well integrated in Portuguese society and the Portuguese society was not anti-Semitic in general. Yes. So, I would, yeah. I yes, would just yes. like to mention that um, there were also at the time the, the hidden conversos, the Banana scene, mm -hmm. uh, known by the derogatory term Mahano in Belmonte and still some other villages in... Um, in northeast Brasca. of Portugal apart from the returnees of the expelled as well. <laughs> yes, as I told you, he, he had a kind of a gentleman's agreement with the Jewish uh, population in Portugal. You can live here, you live your lives as you want, don't uh, don't make a fuss about it. Don't um, be too, too loud about your Jewish identity. Uh, and that way, he never persecuted Jews in Portugal, of course. Yes. Even the new synagogues to be built at the time, they were told not to build the main facade from to the street. So uh, that was still in 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 the monarch monarchic times. So the the Lisbon uh, Jewish um, the, the synagogue in Lisbon has its facade uh, in diagonal diagonal to the to the to the walk side. So, but that. Um, altered that, that um, didn't uh, remain anymore. Still, it has, it's still like that today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, just to finalize, uh, could you name some famous uh, Jewish artists, uh, philanthropists who passed through uh, by uh, sponsored by a uh, visa by Arshid Sosa Mendes? Uh, I know there were Salvador Dali and few yes. other famous. Uh, if you would like to to let our participants to know a little bit more. I have that um, um, that list somewhere. Let me try to check because I think I, I had it here, but I really don't. Uh, I don't. I really don't. I really don't. I don't have that list. I'm sorry. I don't have that list. Yes. The foundation. Uh, the, there is the foundation. Uh, the the Sosa Mendes Foundation has all those lists by um by uh, place of settlement of those refugees in portugal you can check on that foundation site uh, there's a map and you can click on the map and see caldas da rain erisaira sintra all the called the uh, fixed residential areas where all these refugees were sheltered um by any there by location you have the names of all the the, the refugees the refugees that were saved 
Yeah. Um, I had the opportunity to see in the United States Foundation, and I also see many surnames as uh, Schneerson, um, very uh, Chabad surnames, common in Chabad. Um, Hasidic names, surnames that uh, Aristide Souza Mendes saved. Um, I know that the the painter Salvador Dali was one of them. Uh, the Rothschild was one of them. And then yes, I mentioned many, Rothschild. Many he was saved on Sunday, and he was accused for having his office opened on a Sunday and uh, um, charging uh, money for, for being opened on a Sunday. And, and uh, he, he gave visas to many people on that Sunday. <laughs> Thanks, God. And um, there's many philosophers and great artists at the time that were safe. Um, thanks to Aristide Sosa Mendes and his team and, and family and his bravery. Um, uh, I think we, we, we are uh, running out of time now. Uh, we thank everyone for having participated. Uh, we thank Professor Marina Pignatelli for this wonderful uh, uh, presentation and, and this very uh, clarifying um, Q and A, uh, all these questions and subjects we we are touching base now in the end. Uh, I hope those who manage to watch the the film that you enjoy, we will try to send you a better link with better English subtitles during the week. I hope you had enjoy. I hope you come next week. And we thank very much those who uh, sponsored this conference. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you for you. for being with us. Thank you.